As murder is to crow, so swagger is to perch. And as swagger is to perch, so to stagger and stumble would be an apt description of my attempts to catch these predators this year. But unperturbed, I was back down at the lake, accompanied by my ever-present Richard Carter and Holdfast combination, a setup that has seen many a success and plenty of failings over the years. But this time I was leaving no stone unturned and along with some prawn tails and maggots I pulled along a second setup to hopefully double my chances. But also a technique that I've used a number of times over the years to good effect, which is something I use to get the silverfish flashing about up in the water column. The intention isn't to feed the fish, just to get bait fish very very active in front of you and you simply take half a tub of water and introduce some fine ground bait or an additive powder or even wholemeal flour <laughs> when times are hard um, give it a very very good stir so that the particles are all suspended in the water and then using either a water bottle or in this case a syringe you can introduce this into the swim and the particles slowly drift down and encourage the silvers to flash and turn and compete over the particles. Unfortunately my baiting up was interrupted by the fisheries resident goose that had come to demand food with menace. But after a situation involving a box of Jaffa cakes earlier in the year he should know better than to expect food from me and once I'd reminded him of this he uh, went about his business elsewhere on the lake but unfortunately it did mean that I missed filming the first two bites of the session which was this fantastic double take the top fish weighing in at around two pound four and the lower fish I didn't weigh it was comfortably over a pound so it was a very very encouraging start to the fishing if not to the filming because I was there to film the fishing really And the trick is to just be consistent and keep putting this solution in around the hook baits. And as I say, what you're trying to do is to get the bait fish to shoal up around your hook bait, <coughs> creating a lot of movement and vibration, which in turn draws the perch in. And when you see silverfish fire out in front of you, you know that there's perch actively hunting. As I said, fishing with two setups both of them were set up on the float there was only really one fundamental difference between the two setups the left hand rod I've got the bulk shot down near the hook because there was quite a breeze and I wanted to keep one bait anchored in place whereas on the right hand rod I had the shot higher up which allowed the float and the bait to slowly trip through the swim just dragging along the bottom and hopefully creating a little bit of movement that might be of interest to perch. Now the other advantage with having the shot further up the line is that you can actually almost jig the bait on the spot so lift and lower the float and as you do that the hook bait will slowly fall through the water and very often you'll get a take on the drop which is exactly what happened here and it was clear that there was some good sized perch on the munch and up for a feed because before long I had a second, well a third perch but a second fish that looked above two pounds and indeed this one went two pounds six is a very nice fish indeed and I think actually it probably would have gone a little bit bigger but as I had netted it it had coughed up sort of two and a half inch semi-digested roach <laughs> but uh, never want to miss an opportunity I soon mounted that on a hook held it in place with the float rubber and cast it out 
well, not really cast it, just dropped it out on the marginal shelf to see if that could carry on the success that I was having. Now by this point, the uh, goose had gone off to the other side of the lake to harass some Canada geese. And he'd been replaced by some equally needy, but far less aggressive chickens. Which was handy because that allowed me to concentrate on the fishing. It didn't take too long for the dead bait to be taken. And what was clearly another good sized perch was soon on its way to the net. And not only did I manage to net the fish, I managed to net the bait, which had come off during the fight as well. So hoping that that was going to be eaten at least three times. And this one again was over two pounds. And you'll often find this with perch. They tend to hang around in, in their respective year classes. So you get big shoals of small perch or small shoals of big perch. And it really did seem that there were small shoals of big perch on this particular day. But still I kept on with the suspended particle, which works a lot like a spod mix, I guess, in carp fishing. You just keep putting it in and putting it in and then when you see the silvers start firing out you know that there's another swagger of perch making their way along the bank getting ever closer to the rods and hopefully the hook baits and by now <clears throat> the chickens had given way to a robin and I was doing uh, almost as well at twitching as I was at perch fishing. And seeing as I was catching the majority on perch tails, I decided to share the last of my maggots with him. And I'm not fluent in avian, but I'm pretty sure that you don't say thank you by crapping in someone's ground bait. But <laughs> I've heard that it's lucky and so it turned out to be because in fairly short order, prawn tail was taken this time by a much much younger looking fish almost the exception that proves the rule much shinier and much more solid fish and then just on dusk with the uh, dead bait was taken by another cracking looking two pound plus perch And what was turning out to be, well, certainly my best perch fishing session of the season so far. And if not quite a swagger, I certainly left with a spring in my step. <laughs>